Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. All right, guys, so now we are officially recording uh, the Q&A for um, the new member orientation webinar every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time weekly. Uh, I think this is, if, I, if my memory is okay, I think this is week 15. So we're on week 15. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'll talk a little bit about charting. I'll talk a little bit about what I'm looking for in the morning. Uh, any questions that the new members have. So we're in the new member channel. Guys, here's your chance. Ask any questions. I can start just riffing on a couple things or talking about certain things. But uh, let's talk about some things. So who has any questions that maybe you want to put down here? And uh, I can see them and we can talk about that. I'm just watching the SPY, QQQ, and then uh, pertinent stocks that are, you know, that were on the watch list that are running today. So I think this was my list today. We have uh, NAVB, we have Kerr, IC, and SES. So does anybody have any questions or I can just start talking? <laughs> Who's got some questions? Did everybody trade okay today? Like, is everybody safe? Is nobody in major danger? Like, reach out to me if you need some help. Not going to tell you how to trade, but I'm also going to give a little bit of help if I can. So who's, uh, who's got some things to say? Anybody? Or I could just get into this. Cedric, what's up, buddy? Rich, yo, Matt, anybody? W. Halicon, what's up, buddy? Just rant. All right, so let's go over, guys. Let me, let me try to pull up, actually, what I posted in chat today and see why some of them were close and why some of them were actually like, you need a hard stop. Um, so check this out. Let me go back to what I posted this morning on my visual watch list. And uh, it's in the morning. I usually post a visual watch list. Ah, here we go. So look at what I posted in the morning. So this was my watch list every single day. I look at what's running on the day. So obviously Kerr, which is a day one. It's uh, if anybody's unfamiliar what a day one is, it's basically the best description I can give is a day one move is the start of a new, quote unquote new, that's the word in question, a new catalyst. So there's news, something sparks up, maybe even something's been running for four days, but people forgot about it, it bottomed out, and now it's up like this again pre-market. So it's the start of a new catalyst with a new move. So Kerr was day one today, NAVB and SES were day twos. So let's get into why a couple of these were trouble, and then ISEE, -E. so let, let's show this. So. Oh, sorry guys, I'm on a laptop, so it's a little smaller this week. So I gotta kinda, I gotta kinda, hold on one sec. You know what, I might be able to, let's do this. Let's do this. Let me download and put this right here and then open this up when I need it. So see, you can download charts from the chat room. Super convenient. All right, let's see where it is. Cool, so let's talk about Kerr first, right? Let's talk about Kerr. This was a dangerous one, man. And I'll tell you why. I didn't like the fact that it was, oh man, nice death candle. Slam through VWAP, man. That's awesome. If I wasn't giving this webinar, man, I would probably slam this. But again, like I don't really, I don't trade after the first hour, man. But I'm going to tell you right now, that is what I look for. Look at that. That is the trend break I wanted. Slam through VWAP. That's huge. But let's, let's not focus on that right now. Let's focus on the morning. So this was my morning um, kind of levels that I wanted to scale. Let me go back to the new member in case you guys have questions. Hold on, guys. Trying to stay organized. All right, all right. So this is the definition of outer lines. Uh, did this one kind of like trade, you know, the one time out of 10 where it doesn't work? Yeah, it did. Now, here's the thing. This stock is not ultra backside yet, guys. It's obviously into the open. So here's what you got to pay attention to. Obviously, I'm a big advocate of outside lines, waiting for your outside lines. But here's what happened, man. This thing had so much volume. I think it float rotated in the morning. It broke through the scales and this just grinded up. You see this? It just fucking grinded up. So as it was approaching, I actually, ironically, literally, I had my first order right here. 
here and here. And I cut them actually because it wasn't a sharp move. So I actually didn't even play this today at all. Um, arguably, I'd probably play this right now if I wasn't giving the webinar so I could focus on it. But um, I'd go small as it is late day. But I actually didn't even get a piece of this. So while a couple people stopped out, a couple people banked on this first move. I know Cedric, uh, one of my favorite members, he reached out to me and he was like, dude, I nailed it. I was like, dude, that's honestly how you need to do it. Because the thing about this, guys, is outside lines. This is such a good example. And I want to talk about this is even though this is a great entry level for outside lines, sometimes you are, it's going to break. It's going to test you a little bit or stop loss hunt, which I don't really declare this a stop loss hunt kind of move. I mean, a little bit, but this is a breakthrough. It just failed and then stuffed immediately hard. So this was huge. But if you guys give yourself a little bit more room, um, then obviously you could have nailed a good move. Unfortunately, if I had, I did start in this, I probably would have cut above the line because I'm not usually willing to give too much room over pre-market high of day, but anyone that did great job. But again, guys, again, this stock had the volume. You need to pay attention to this. The demand started to dry out, but it wasn't really convincing under VWAP. And most importantly, it wasn't anywhere near like a death line down here. And then it came back with volume. Remember what I said, if it starts testing kind of like the halfway mark of the morning, it's going to probably grind back. So, you know, this thing was strong today. It came back. It's still not even backside. It's starting to be backside and it's breaking supports on the way down. But again, like, let me just try to kind of like, Oh, I like when these are smaller. It's just easier for me to see. Let me, let me see. Ah, eh, whatever. This is, this is, let's see if I can detach. I want to detach. Yeah, there we go. I want to get this like this. One second, guys. I want to make this as, as, yeah, see, this is just way better. I don't like when things are super expanded. So as you guys can see, you could have gotten a move out of this. Had I probably got in and focused on this, I probably would have stopped out. But it just was grinding up. I didn't really like it in here. I felt like it could rip, and it did. So I, thank God I stayed safe. I guess my trader's intuition worked or whatever you want to call that bullshit. But it, it freaking worked for me today, right? Uh, and then now it's death candling down. This is a huge indicator for me to usually go in. Like I said, this is not only a me major break of trend, it's a major slam through VWAP, but again, it's, 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 it's lining up with a little bit of support from earlier. See, the line is already drawn. Top, top, support, support. Uh, we'll see what it does. But if this convincingly slams down, this thing could really be a goner. Um, let's see. Next was ISEE. This, man, this is the number one example of a stock I do not like. And I did not touch this because while I had these lines, I think from yesterday, actually, so ignore these lines. I didn't have these for today. I actually had these for the day because this is the third day move and I don't really trade third days. This was for yesterday. Um, but as you guys can see, where are longs in trouble on this going into day three? Look at this. Let's go live, right? In the morning. Dude, you've got a day one that held up pretty strong. Day two, it grinded all the way back. This thing going in, where are the longs in trouble? You want this thing down here for a short up here outside lines. This thing, dude, if this was a trend, longs are not in trouble. So going in today, when it was at 210, you know, I warned in chat, I got a timestamp. I could pull it up probably, but here, actually, let me do it because it's really, 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 <laughs> Live trade bottom fish. What's up, man? You know I don't trade during these webinars, bro. I get too focused, man. Um, and I can't trade on a on a Mac. I purposely closed down my PC uh, so I can just teach you guys uh, or help out. Let me go to my comment, guys, as I made this uh, really early in the morning, and I wanted to show why. So, do do do. Waiting for fantasy orders. Good luck. Okay, I think I think we're cruising up on it. Ah, look at this. It's 6.44 a.m. my time, so that's 9.44 in the morning uh, market time. Guys, I said this literally about on this candle. I said, um, where are we? I said, ISEE, if this breaks 225, I have zero, zero, zero interest in this. I'm not going to fight trend. Man, you have to pay attention to this, guys. You're not looking at just this. You're not looking at just morning action. This is not should be on your chart. This entire move should be on your chart. Not only is this day three where it's holding up, dude, this is not something you want to fight. If this gets major volume, look at, look at day two, look at the volume. This is like day one volume even more. And here it's just blast off. So as you guys can see, if something breaks a previous high of day, 
that is the number one way to get out. So I know even Alex took a little bit of a loss on this as he was saying like he shouldn't have touched it. But again, man, we all make mistakes but as long as you protect yourself, which Alex did. So that was key. If you are going to go into something like this and risk, you got to cut your loser. And in fact, I'm going to show like Alex did a fucking phenomenal job, man. Look at this. He got in a little bit. He scaled 210 to 223. And then, dude, he cut immediately once it broke. Alex knows how to freaking trade, man. This is how you stay protected. You set a hard stop and you don't touch it again, man. This thing is nothing but trend up. Front side, higher lows, demand is strong. Look at zombie hour. After the zombie hour indicator, this thing like parabolic up. This was not just an up. Once zombie hour to the cent, I mean to the second drop, this thing was gone, dude. This thing was this thing was an absolute headache for sure. So this is a this is now absolutely a technical um technically speaking, a multi-day runner. I have zero, zero, zero. Like I could not have less interest in this. I have zero interest. Like I won't even have this on my screens tomorrow unless it broke down to like 220 today. Guys, just let it do its thing. Hit the low hangers. Low hangers being um, SES. Uh, let's pull that up. SES today, low hanger. I missed it by like five cents, man, or whatever it was. Like it was, I was so, oh no, that was the other one. Um, dude, I missed this by nothing. I wanted to scale in here where the previous tops were. Um, this is the perfect example of a low hanger. You know, find the tops, find the lines, find your scale zone. And this is what I wanted. I wanted just in here. So I think I had orders right here, right here, and right here. Couldn't get it. Um, but as you can see, guys, this is just this is this is just a beautiful day to low hanger in the sense that longs are stuck on a gap down, pops back up, you know, near the red green level, near the previous tops, boom you can get a nice move out of that. Unfortunately, I play a little too, bit too conservative most of the time. And again, something like right here where my orders would be, sometimes they don't fill and then I miss a move. But again, uh, I'm just trying to give you guys a general speaking thought process behind it. And then NAVB was the last one. Let me pull that up. NAVB. So as you guys can see, this was nowhere near my lines. Like, like I, I, I don't play these. If you ask me like, hey, Tosh, did you get an, I, I never get these because I don't give a shit about chasing. I don't give a shit about inner lines. I like outer lines. Where's the consolidation? Where's the volume? Where are the previous tops? Um, again, this didn't have much range to the stock. So I'm willing to, on a chart pattern, this looks like a lot of range. But on a um, price level, this is literally like 22 cents. So again, guys, it just depends on what you're comfortable with, what you backtest, but I needed this to pop more. I am literally not going to chase a five cent move. You know what I mean? If this popped all the way up here, yeah, I can get some size on. But again, it's just what you're comfortable with and I'm not chasing that shit. Nice spy move. That is beautiful. Look at that. Let's go. Make spy great again, baby. I um, have a couple big caps that I long uh, for the long haul on dips of the market. Um, so I just pay attention. I pay attention to SPY every now and then. I, uh, I'm a swing trader as well for big caps, sometimes uh, if the market's right. So that's what I've been doing. <laughs> uh, let me, where am I, where am I? Let's get back into this guy. Let me go to the chat to see if you guys have any questions. I like to stay focused as much as I can. Um, does anybody have any questions? Let's see. What's up, dudes? Okay, so, oh, zombie indicator. Uh, WH Elcon, um, reach out to Joe Kelly, brother. He will give that to you as he has it saved. DM Joe Kelly. Uh, he will get you that. Um, we put that in TOS. It's a, thing, it's a think script that you can put on all your charts that the minute 1030 rolls around, man, um, it's going to input that line and you are just going to absolutely see and know when to either reduce your position, cut entirely, or, I mean, dude, look at this. It's so freaking cool, right? Like, like, look at that. The second 1030 hits, this goes. And then you can just have a general, like, idea of where you should cut it or what you should do or um, whatever, what have you. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's about 1030 a.m. Tosh, what can we talk about this? So, Rich, um, I know you're new to MIC. So, 1030 is the zombie hour. The way we like to talk about zombie hour is it's it, it, after the first hour, man, where retail is really – in control and traders are trading against traders and not necessarily a plethora of algorithms and computers, you are going to get morning emotion. You're going to get morning panic. So when, you know, like here's, I'll pull this like little one up. Like, let me just give you an example. Like, let me see if I can find an example actually. Like Kerr. So this is, this is actually a great example. This is a fucking phenomenal example, man. Look at this. So Rich, pay attention to this buddy. 
in the first hour, the reason why Bao will scale so much in the first hours, I'm sure Bao nailed this. I didn't really pay attention as I was prepping for this webinar, but let me, let me uh, take off these. In the first hour of the day, man, this is where panic seeps in. So buyers, buyers, a rush of buyers, and then panic. You're going to get these major moves. So then, oh, nice. Awesome. Thank you, Ralph. So yeah, yeah, guys, download that. That's the thinker scrim for the thinker the think or swim script for zombie hours, kind of a tongue twister. So here's what happens, man. After the first hour, then we get this kind of grinding and grind. This is computers, man. This is when the people play. And then this is where the algorithms play. And then you get these, like, let's trap a bunch of shorts and then let's trap a bunch of longs. Like this happens all the time. So again, man, the first hour is just a way to really wait for outer lines, scale, cover washes. If you're trading more on front side, you want to do front side, front side shorting, requires front side cover. See, this is a, this is my move, man. This is literally like, if I want to say like, this is my claim to fame as a trader, like after six years, this is my number one play. So again, like, I don't care. I'm not going to cry over spilled milk, but that's it, man. Like I wait for these massive plunges that breach a certain level that breach a certain point, like whether it's a trend, whether it's a VWAP, these are huge. I could have absolutely nailed that. But <clears throat> again, I like to really stay focused on one thing at a time. My brain works that way. I don't want to be teaching you guys, have a bunch of silence. If it does rip against me, I'm not able to do the webinar, but that's it, man. That's a great fucking play. I would probably cover this, um, scale into another pop, ride a core and set for a break even above the UAP just to protect yourself. So that's the way I would do it. Um, let's get to the next question. Um, oh, so Rich, you know, volume kind of dries in through zombie hour, the first hour, and then things zombie back. So this is literally a zombie move from lows. That's kind of what how to explain it. So every day at 1030 Eastern Standard Time, you want to be kind of not only if you're short, maybe trimming your position, paying yourself by the time 1030 rolls around, pay attention to the higher lows, pay attention to the demand, the volume levels, what it's testing, if it's testing the morning levels. And if you're long, this is a huge time to wait for just longs, man. A lot of traders, a lot of members of MIC wait for the first hour to kind of blanket over. And now they're waiting for these reclaims, these, these fuck you candles, these, these entries for traders. Shorts go out, longs go in. That is, that is literally perfectly said, Tay. Uh, Tay's our uh, unbelievably great um, swing long side trader. So guys, reach out to Tay if you have any questions about uh, long side trading and also swing trading simultaneously at the same time. She catches really good moves. Uh, shout out to the BPTH fucking PNL. I saw Tay kick ass on. Damn, that chick rocked BPTH on the long side, man. Uh, so shout out Tay. Um, what else can I tell you guys? So that's that's kind of what I was looking at today. Again, not every day is going to be a home run. Not every day you're going to get uh, orders filled. Not at, every, Some days, man, almost every single day this happens to me. If I get one or two trades in, the third trade, I was literally off by three or five cents. It happens all the time. And that was, um, what was the one today? Was it SES that I missed? Um, yeah, so just things like this, man. I missed it by a little bit, but obviously you guys can get a clear understanding of like, not every day you're going to nail everything. Not every day you're going to miss. Not every day you're going to hit. Um, the way to excel in trading from what you know thou alex and myself have kind of gauged over the years and decades is you know have a process man get one setup that works for you whether it's low hangers whether it's a death line day one get one strategy and master the shit out of it and only focus on that until you build your money until you build a bankroll and then guys seriously then you can venture out the worst thing you can do as a new trader is say dude my shit don't stink. I can nail everything. I can do the first red day. I can do death lining. I can do first bounce. I can do day two all in the first year of your trading. That's crazy. After six years, I still only focus on about three setups. My three setups personally are low hangers like this, um, Kerr, uh, kind of death candles like this, late day moves. And another one would be, I guess, just Kerr, another example, if it would have breached death line. That's it, man. I got three setups, bro. I got three setups. And that's my process. That's consistency. If I'm shorting front side midday and I'm taking a loss, I'm breaking my process, I lose. If I'm trying to trade a big cap that I don't know how to trade, I lose. If I try to trade, like stick with what you know, man. The trade, dude, a really good trader does not have to be the smartest guy in the world. In fact, he, he can be kind of dumb, but if he knows how to master something, then he can at least capitalize on that one thing. And then over time, momentum is going to build. And then you're going to rock it, man. You're going to look back and be like, wow, I made 
$10,000 this month playing one setup and I've only been trading a year and a half. I don't know. I'm just saying like everybody's learning curve is different. Uh, but I will tell you that the key to success is zeroing in on something and getting as good as you possibly can on it. And then branching out way later when you have the confidence and also resources, AKA bankroll to do so. Um, for Kerr, would this be considered a first bounce at zombie hour? Oh, hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. So like, the thing with um, the first bounce is this is like not something I play anymore, but yes. So you, you want a big move. You want float rotation. You want a lot of demand. Um, this was a little bit more overextended than a lot of first bounces that I would do. Uh, Halicon, but I, w I mean, there's a move in here, man. Like you wait for it to get to the support levels and um, previous previous resistance, which is now support, right? I always, always, the first bounce I always love is is like like this i always love the the massive move and the drop to kind of a line where like the tops were with vwap i i that's my first bounce number one like i don't really trade them anymore but if i did this is probably the only one i would have tried to hit and dude i'm such a pussy when it comes to the first bounce man because i don't long stocks i probably would have I'm pretty good at nailing near VWAP, so I probably would have gotten a little bit of a bottom tick, but I probably would have sold it at like 204. Like, again, you never know how hard these things are going to bet. Like, I probably would have gotten this move, like literally this exact move, and I probably wouldn't even have gotten the whole thing. Like, I bet you. Because I'm just, I, I don't long, man. I'm a short bias trader. I can hold a short all day. Like, if I have a good average on this, I can hold it for the next three days. But when it comes to longing, again, find your comfort level. Find your comfort zone. I'm not a long trader, man. I only was in the beginning because I didn't know you could short and I didn't know you, it was so easy to short. Um, meaning like not easy in the sense that shorting is easy. Shorting, like the easy part of it is that there's resources nowadays. You could open up a Venom account that trades through interactive brokers with Chad Hessing for like four or $5,000, man. I didn't even know that existed back then. I thought you needed like $30,000 when I first started and I didn't short for the first two years. I literally just did longs, like first bounce things. So I did major pullbacks. I probably would have long something like this on VWAP, caught that and, and sold that. That's what I did for the first two years. But it's not something I would do anymore because I've been caught in these kind of moves now. And once you're caught in a couple of these, dude, you don't want a long anymore. <laughs> I'm not trying to discourage any longs. Again, you can make a ton of money, play safe, know your niches, know your notches, know your strategy, know your criteria. But I am through and through a short bias trader. This is my perfect move. Like this is my quintessential move. Yes, I'm always chasing this shiny new pattern. And here's the thing, man. I'm, this is nothing personal, Halicun. This is nothing to zero you in or out. I get DMs like this, brother, probably five times a day. I always tell them the same thing. If you are always on the shiny new object and you, you will tread water, brother. You will tread water for years. You will not make money. You will make money and then give it back and make money and give it back. You if you want to progress as a trader, it's mastering one. When you try to chase the shiny new object and do all that, but you're going to, you just, it's not sustainable. That's the problem. You're going to win today. You're going to win tomorrow. You're going to win the next day. And then the next day is going to wipe out those three days because you don't know how to handle the new price action. You don't know where to put the, um, the stop loss. You don't need, you know what I mean? Like it's things like that. Um, when it comes to stop losses, guys, this is one of the most important things we teach. Um, what was the stock that, uh, Alex trade today. Perfect example. And let me talk about why. Uh, let me take off some of these things, remove drawings. Okay. If Alex did, uh, where did he trade again? He traded, I think he scaled from right here to like, I don't know, something like say I, I, I'm guesstimating, but I think he scaled from like right here to right here, right? He had a stop loss right here or wherever it was. Let me introduce why stop losses are going to be your best friend in the freaking world and why you need them. Guys, if this between the red lines is where you're scaling like Alex did today, having a market hard stop is going to save you because of two reasons. Mental stops are too dangerous. If you were to give yourself a mental stop where it's running, it's running, it's running, and you say, okay, I'm going to give it to the blue line. It breaks through the blue line and then comes back down, you're like, okay, I'll give it a little bit more, and then boom, blast off, you're a deer in the headlights. Dude, you might be adding, 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 and then you're done. And then you're, you're, and then you're done. Like the whole point is, guys, is you need to protect yourself. So when you put a market hard stop, 
you avoid all of this. It's an automated machine algorithm. Get you the fuck out. Press panic button. Leave it up to the computers. I don't look. The reason why I post things like this every day is, guys, I have a skill zone. Oh, sorry. Uh, what was the? Where did I put one? I'll just show NAVB because I took off a couple. Um, one of them for this webinar. This is my hard stop. I always put a hard stop right above these. Like if I, if that's my skill zone, this is my hard stop guys. Like you got to understand, I am willing to scale a certain level and then I let the machine take over. You need to protect yourself. If you just give yourself a mental stop, this gro gro goes up just like Kerr did, blasts through pre-market high day and keeps going or SES or ICE, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Put a fucking hard stop in your game man. you're going to save thousands if not tens if not hundreds of thousands depending on the bankroll and the player that you are i know traders in mic that are worth multi multi-million dollar traders and they are trading upwards of thirty thousand dollar a day p l's again you know i'm not going to zero these guys out but guys not everyone's trading with a 2k account or 25k account or even a one million dollar account there's some really big players out there so i don't care what size you use protect yourself uh and that's my rant <laughs> yes condom for stocks more important than even in real life. Well, that's actually <laughs> arguable. <laughs> How much money do you have on the line? <laughs> but yes, yes, it's a way to protect yourself. Uh, does anybody have any specific questions though about today or anything maybe I covered or MIC chat? Let's see what the guys are talking about. Um, <clears throat> what the hell is BGFB? What the hell is this? Where'd this come from? I didn't even see this today. What's the daily look like? Eh, kind of shit. So I don't like I don't like uptrending stocks for a little while like this. I don't like this on the daily chart. I don't like to see that. Um, what the hell is this though? What's the news? Energy stocks, huh? Is there, oh, this must be through the Fed. Big Five Sporting Goods shares up. Oh, oh, okay. Big Five Sporting Goods. That's what this is. Big Five. I'm a dumbass. Uh, screw that, dude. This is a, this is basically a big cap. This is a name brand. I don't trade things like that. This is big five, man. Dude, you go down to the fucking liquor store, you're gonna see a big five next to it with sporting goods that's still totally in business. I don't trade this shit. I don't trade companies that I can recognize on the street. This is such a good example. BGFB. This honestly may be one of my first times ever looking at big five. I think I maybe have saw this like four years ago. This is in play now. I don't give a rat's ass off screens. Literally, like I wouldn't even pay attention to this. See what SES is doing. Bottom out. What's ISE? Trade your niche, man. Trade your process. Trade your plan. I focus on small caps. If I do focus on a bid cap, it's usually for the long side. Ah, see, Tay's in the long side of, of BG, BGFB today. Fantastic. Earnings on BGFB. Dude, it's a real company, man. It's a real, it's, dude, it's big five, bro. It's big five. Tay, I totally agree with that trade. Don't short big five. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's freaking awesome. One of our moderators is making money on that. I love it. Um, so, you know, guys, there's a way to trade for every single trader out there. If I'm a short bias trader, I am not trying to take down big five. That's like, that's like, it's a smaller version, but it's like, hey, Dick Sporting Goods, let's take you down. What the fuck? I'm not going against Dick Sporting Goods or Louis Vuitton or Whole Foods or big five, dude. I'm no way in hell. I'm going to go against ISEE to where they probably have a little shack in North Dakota that is, you know, looks like a boiler room. I don't freaking know. I don't want recognizable companies. I don't want to know that. I don't know, want to know what it is. <laughs> Does anybody have any kind of closing questions, guys? I've been talking for a long time. Uh, we covered hard stops. We covered like watch list in the morning, what I was looking at today, fantasy orders, uh, multi-day runners. I'm trying to think of anything that we could talk about that's uh, kind of a good example. Stopping out, we showed that, you know, what's a good level, how to scale. Um, anything else, guy? a volume, you know, what to look for. Obviously, today is going to be huge. Look at this freaking volume. Look at the day two, nothing. It's like a tumbleweed. Look at that. See the difference? Day one, day two, day three. Any closing questions, guys? Or we can keep this short today. Don't be shy. Let me see if there's anything else I wanted to talk about today. Let's go to the main trading chat. Did I want to talk about anything else? I'm trying to think. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, was there anything else that I may have missed on covering? I mean, just one last thing guys I'll talk about is less, like, this is such a standard, unless somebody has a question right now. One thing I just wanna make clear is, nice, Ali Kun, thanks for showing up, buddy. What I wanna make clear, guys, is just trend. Just, it's as simple as if you are failing, popping out, <laughs> see you, Tay, good luck. Uh, buy a basketball for me uh, if with your winnings. Thanks, Rich. If anybody is fighting trend and you are not a consistent, profitable trader, guys, the first thing I promise you in your trading career, because I was a contrarian for like the first two years of my life in my trading career, I just wanted to bet against the grain always. If it was up, I wanted to go against. If it was going down, I wanted to go up. Dude, the number one thing you need to pay attention to in your in the beginning of your trading career, if you're trying to find kids, is what fucking side of the trend are you on, man? Look at ISEE. -E. Why would you be short this? The long, like ride the surf, dude. This is a tidal wave. Look at something like, um, where is it? Um, what was the one? NAVB is just pure backside. This trend is down, man. The tsunami has flushed. Um, what was the other one? Sorry, SES was it? Dude, the trend is broken. This is going down. Like, this is the point. These are called continuation moves for a reason. Guys, the trend is broken. ISEE, -E, the trend is not only not broken on a multi-day runner, it's not broken today at all. So for the guys shorting right here or right here or right here, if you are not consistent or profitable yet, why the hell would you do that to yourself? Join the people. Join the trend. I hate to say it, but conform to the lines. Conform to the crowd, man. You could literally buy dips on this until it stops working and breaks trend with a hard stop out for the long side. Uh, bottom fishing. Would you say Kerr could reclaim VWAP now or is this your... Okay, let's... <clears throat> let's take a look. Uh... Oh, it totally can. Absolutely. Yeah, John, this could totally reclaim VWAP. Why? Because it's still... Because intraday traders, a couple of them are still in the money and pre-market. So like... Dude, the point of no return is literally right here. Like one set, like this could totally, like you need to break, uh, you need to break this support and mostly that support. So these are all intraday supports. See that? Once you break all these supports and then, and then you got to break the pre-market. But again, I think this could, I think this has no chance of a return under 170 personally. If this goes under 170, this thing is fucking done. Uh, 165 is probably the safest as that lines up with even the volume pre-market for a death line. Uh, if that's a true death line, um, this could totally zombie back, man. It really could. Um, right now I have on 180. Perfect. Uh, would you say, yeah, so here's the thing, man. If this does, you know, just set a hard stop at two. If it breaks two, that's overview up with a whole number. You know, like I would, if I were short at 180, which is a bit of a chase, did you just chase or did you long it? Um, I'm like, did you chase that short or be careful about you? Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes. Just be careful, man, about chasing. That's a little bit of a chase, John. Um, again, death line, the real death line is really like 165 as this is more of a neckline. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 180 to two is honestly where exactly where I would have scaled this. If I would have hit 180 originally, I'd give it to probably two. Because uh, the thing you want to focus on, it's not a trickle through view op, it's a fuck you candle up. It's like, it's like you don't want to see this candle, brother. You don't want to see that. If you have that, you got to get the fuck out. So if this did one of these, that's why it's just set a hard stop, man. Automate it. And uh, yeah, that's what I would say. But could this come back? Yes, it can. Um, Curry is not an amazing company from what I remember. Uh, their chart is just terrible. It is a little bit bottomed out, which I don't like for shorting. Uh, this means they could come back just because it needs a day to be up, uh, as this is really, really bottomed out. I mean, how much lower can it go kind of thing? But again, man, I, I mean, it, you know, I would have nailed this move because I get the immediate wash and then set a, a stop for break even on the rest. But, you know, if you chase it a little bit on that next, next snap, then uh, yeah, just put a hard stop, man. That's really all you can do. <coughs> That's my opinion. I mean, do what, you, do what you need, man. I'm not telling you how to trade. <laughs> I would just tell you what I would do. All right. Does anybody have a closing question? Otherwise, I will probably wrap this up. 
my voice, I was sick all last week and my voice, I'm good. I'm not sick anymore, but man, it just, it, it's still like, I swear to God, like two weeks later, it's still a little bit raspy. So it's just like, man, just don't get sick. Ben, I see that you uh, raised your hand, brother. I can't put you in here, but I'll tell you what, man, become a member to ask a question or DM my social media. Uh, T Bradley 90 underscore trader here. Let me go to the end of this actually and show you guys. Here's how to contact us guys. Let me make this very clear. Um, not only should you be do, go to, going to our webinar, um, alextomiz.co, guys, www.alextomiz.co. That's not .com. That's .co. Watch it. Sign up for our webinar, um, and you guys are not going to regret it. It's absolutely fantastic. Next, how to contact us um, at My Investing Club for Twitter, uh, for uh, Instagram, obviously, both of those. Alex is Alex underscore Tamiz. Twitter is AT09 underscore trader. Modern Rock, Modern Rock for Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Tosh at myinvestingclub.com for Gmail. Uh, G uh, email me anything. And my Twitter and Instagram handles are right here. Don't be shy, guys. Schedule a call with us today. Become a member. We are literally here to answer any question that you guys have. Help you weekly. Do everything that we can. Um, again, guys, we're here for you. Get on daily phone calls with us. Everything, 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 everything. Um, but definitely take advantage of this webinar. Um, you guys are going to love it. And lastly, um, let me actually put a link in here real quick. I have a, hold on one sec. I have a link for you guys. Let me find it. I hope everyone's staying safe, man. Today was a bit of a tricky day. Hey, yeah, Tom, John, no problem, man. All right, guys, so this, anytime, man, anytime. So this link, guys, right here is uh, you can sign up, uh, get on a webinar with us, check out our webinar, input your information, uh, you know, first name, email address, things like that, and we will give you access to our webinar. Um, and a couple things, man. So alextimiz.co, um, and, uh, you know, join our community, man. We're, we'd love to have you. We'd love to help you out. We go above and beyond weekly to make sure you guys are taken care of. I promise you that um, whether MIC is going to work for you, uh, like it's worked for hundreds, if not indirectly or directly for thousands of traders, uh, whether it's our YouTube channel, our archive, our main chat room, our video library, you guys will not be disappointed. So um, we're always taking feedback. If you have any questions, concerns, suggestions, reach out, please. Uh, we're here for you guys. We, we try to give you guys a plethora of content go above and beyond and just do everything we can, man. So thank you guys so much for coming today. Uh, any remainder questions or anything that I may see late, guys, my PMs are always open. Feel free to DM me. Uh, also remember my email is tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Rich, awesome. Dude, new, new member and he's satisfied. Thanks, Rich. Glad you're, uh, glad you're happy with our chat, man. That's so cool to see. Jack, what's up? Ralph, thanks, guys. All right, I'm going to go rest my voice for a little bit. I'll see you guys. Stay safe out there. Use hard stops. Hey, traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T-O-S-H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.